All right, this is the sixth and final episode of the beginner blender tutorial. So far, we have set up a model of the solar system and told the computer to animate the planets going around their orbits. In this episode, we will animate the camera using keyframes and then render out the final video. So here we go. Let's get in it. All right, so first things first, we already have the camera in our scene. Uh, it's over here. Uh, we're going to want to start it out somewhere, so I'm thinking out here, so that we can sort of swoop in like this, and then we'll come around and probably end up somewhere over here. All right, so we're going to go Control Alt Zero to snap the camera to our current position, and uh, I like that. That already looks good. So. We're going to need to turn on some keyframe stuff. So down here at the bottom, we have the timeline. This allows us to scrub through our animation as we saw in the previous video. What we're going to do now, we're going to end up seeing some little dots are going to show up on here. These are keyframes. Keyframes are where uh, you're telling the computer that you want the object to make a change to its location or to its rotation or to its scale or some other property. So the computer will then interpolate between the keyframes so that it can sort of figure out how to get from state A to state B. So you see above the uh, timeline here, there's this little record button. Go ahead and hit that. That is the auto keying feature. So for some of the things when we uh, change some properties, it's also going to automatically put in keyframes for us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set a keyframe manually at the beginning. So make sure that the camera is selected. Uh, we can tell it is because it is orange on the border of it and go over, hover over location, and hit I on your keyboard, and then do the same thing for rotation. Uh, you can also, if you have your mouse hovering over the 3D viewport, hit I, and it brings up the keyframe menu, and then you could choose location and rotation and put keyframes in that way, or for any of these other uh, common uh, animated properties. All right, so now that we've got our first keyframe in, let's move to frame 100. Now, if you remember in the previous video, we set it so that it takes 500 frames for Pluto to make a full uh, orbit around the sun. So we're gonna wanna probably set our animation to be about 500 frames. So let's do that now. So you can change that there in this little box here that sets the end. And then if you use your scroll wheel uh, above the timeline, you can sort of zoom out. And then you can use this little bar at the bottom to scroll it. Uh, so we're going to basically start with 100 frame increments. We're running at 24 frames per second, which you can check in the uh, output properties here. Uh, it'll have down here, it says 24 frames per second. Now at frame 100, we're going to move the camera to a different location, say something like this maybe. Uh, so it sort of swoops down and gets closer. That's good. Control Alt Zero on the numpad will then snap the camera to that uh, point of view. And as you can see, now the location and rotation are orange. And so that means on this frame, we have changed those properties, but we have not yet inserted a keyframe. Uh, so this is one of the things uh, that, that Control Alt Zero does not set automatic keyframes. So we have to just set a keyframe by hitting I while hovering over those options. And now if we scrub back in the footage, we can see that the camera moves. And so we're gonna to wanna to sort of keep an eye on the pacing that it's moving. We wanna to try to match between each of, our, uh, each of our points. We want it to try to keep the same amount of speed. Uh, all right, so the next one, we're going to uh, skip over to frame 200. All right, and we'll just continue moving the camera in closer. So let's say we do something like this. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then we'll do the control alt zero to snap to it. Uh, let's actually bring it out a little farther so we can get Jupiter in the shot. So to do that, we're gonna do the uh, little mouse button to rotate out of the camera view. And then we're just gonna use the, uh, the transform gizmo to uh, pull it back. So yeah, make sure you're on local for the transform orientation when you're manipulating the camera, it just makes things a lot easier. 
uh, hitting zero on the keyboard, of course, it snaps it back in. We still don't have Jupiter in here, so we're just gonna hit R twice to rotate. And we're just gonna rotate it a little bit. Eh, you know what? I actually like having the sun at the center there. Let's not worry about Jupiter so much. Uh, we're gonna get Jupiter crossing in front anyways. So that gives a, we should try it. Let's, let's bring this down a little bit more so that we can try and get Jupiter crossing and eclipsing it. So what we wanna do is we wanna try to bring the camera down a little bit, I think, so that it's more in the plane. Almost there. So, what do we need to do to hit that? Uh, these buttons here, this will let you skip to the next keyframe. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't want to get too micro. Uh, all right, there we go. Now, let's just try to tilt up just a little bit and see if we can keep that perspective. I think that'll work. Uh, control Z un is undo. It is your friend. Okay, here we go. I think this is going to be just about perfect. Cool. Oh, we get Saturn coming through too. That's pretty cool. Actually, why don't we just move this keyframe to here? Oops. So click away to deselect, and then we're just gonna select this one keyframe here, and we're just gonna move that up to here. Uh, so that's gonna give us Saturn on that point. I think that's close enough to our 200 that we can, we can live with that. All right, so let's do Control-Alt-Zero to snap the camera to it. Uh, let's just grab the camera just a little bit and bring it down because I kind of want it to just hit that sort of silhouette there. All right, cool. So now let's see how this works. Let's see if this is going to work for us. So here it's coming in. It looks cool. Pacing's good. Zuber swings around. Saturn eclipses the sun. That's cool. All right, so let's now hop ahead to frame 350 and we'll have it sort of come out here and get a little bit closer to the inner solar system about like that let's say all right because we want to have it see earth a little bit so again control alt zero snap to it and we want to just do a little double r to rotate so that we can bring the earth into view just a little bit so we have the earth's orbit in view and i think that's going to be good so let's Let's see where we're going here. Yeah, okay, that's working pretty well. So now what we're gonna wanna do is sort of for our final uh, keyframe here at the end on frame 500, we're just gonna pull back out a little bit and get a nice little wide shot of everything again. Sort of up above something like this Let's say uh, let's let's go even farther out so we'll grab this and pull it out a little farther I think that's pretty good let's actually shift it a little bit there all right, I like that. So let's go ahead and save, and uh, we'll set up our render settings and render this bad boy out. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna make sure Bloom is checked, good. And then we're gonna go down to the uh, uh, output properties. You can leave all this stuff here default. Uh, we had already talked before about the frame start and end, those should be the same. Uh, the main thing we want to change is this little block of info here. So next to the TMP, hit the uh, file folder, and we're going to choose a place to save our file. Solar system. 
and we're gonna call this solar system uh, one. That looks good. So of course you can name it whatever you want and save it wherever you want. This is just uh, uh, making sure that it doesn't go to the temp directory. And then we want to change this PNG file, which are individual uh, image files. We want to change that to an FFMPEG video. And then we'll go down to encoding. And we're going to change the container to MPEG-4. And then we're going to set the output quality to high quality. And that should be good settings for what we're doing here today. Uh, so we should be ready to rock. All right. So save one more time. Go up to render and choose render animation, or you can hit control F12. It's cool how quickly it goes from so uh, ordered to seeming chaos. And yet if you just rewound it, it would all go back to that ordered state. So cool. All right. So go check your animation. Uh, you might need to make some fine tuning adjustments to uh, some of those keyframes to make it all smoothed out and look good. But, uh, but yeah, well done. You've come to the end of uh, this tutorial series. If you want to give yourself a little challenge and put what you've just learned to use, try making the moon orbit around the Earth while the Earth is orbiting around the sun. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I have other tutorials in the works. So uh, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on them. And if you really like this tutorial, in the description there is a link to my Patreon. So head on over there and my supporters get exclusive asset packs and other cool stuff I have made over the years for animation, VFX, video production, Dungeons and Dragons, all sorts of stuff. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Cheers.